In September of 2007, a boy was biking home from school in the Netherlands. Although his name was never released to the public, we'll call him Lucas for the sake of the story. Lucas was suddenly approached by another boy on a bike. The boy told Lucas that he wanted his stuff on RuneScape or he would beat him up. Lucas knew this boy and he had made the same threat in the past, but nothing had come of it. However, this time was different. A few moments later, an older boy who was friends with the younger boy rode up next to them. This older boy also threatened him, and they told Lucas that he had to come to the younger boy's house or he would be in big trouble. Lucas was terrified, and out of fear, he agreed. He didn't know it yet, but what would happen to Lucas next would become one of the most fascinating and important cases in modern Dutch law. The three boys arrived at the younger boy's house, and Lucas was quickly ushered into a bedroom. One of the boys pointed to a computer and told Lucas Lucas to log into his RuneScape account. He told them that he didn't want to, and they both began punching him. He was hit in the ribs and head until he fell to the ground. They would then begin kicking his chest and legs, before both boys took turns standing on his hips and ribs while one threatened to kill him. The younger boy went to the kitchen and came back with a knife. Then the older boy went to the kitchen and came back with two knives. With knives in hand, they threatened to kill him again. Lucas knew that he he now had no choice but to cooperate. The older boy logged into RuneScape using the bedroom computer, while the younger boy took Lucas to another computer in the living room. After Lucas logged in, the younger boy took control of the computer and dropped a valuable mask and amulet, which I'll go more in depth about in a minute. After the items were dropped, the older boy picked them up and logged out. Both computers were then turned off by the older boy. Lucas began arguing with the older boy, telling him to turn the computer back on. On, but instead of doing that, he just threw Lucas to the ground. Both boys would then force him out of the house. Luckily, Lucas didn't suffer any serious injuries from this besides a few bruises. Now, before I talk about what happened to the younger and older boy, I think I need to rewind a bit. Oh, and also discuss today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. It's crazy to think that Raid has only been around for four years, but has so much to offer. Right now, Raid has 700 plus plus unique champions, 15 awesome factions like Lizardmen and Orcs, 12 imposing dungeons to conquer, engaging PvP content, regular content updates, you can play on mobile and desktop, customize just about anything you want with your champions, and play with over 400 million players worldwide. Plus, if you haven't noticed what drew me to the game, it has some pretty cool graphics. If you're thinking about downloading Raid, you might want to do it before October 7th. Until then, you can use promo code JTSKIN to get a skin for the Stagnite Champion that was designed by JonTron. Plus, if you want a free legendary champion, Sun Wukong, all you gotta do is log in to raid on seven different days between August 22nd and October 23rd. Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get awesome bonuses like Epic Champion Talia and stuff like energy refills, a skill tome, and an XP booster. I'll see you on the battlefield. You might be wondering, how did the boys even know that Lucas was wealthy in RuneScape in the first place? Well, Lucas actually came into his wealth not by playing the game and grinding hard, but by pure luck. According to the police report, a few days prior to the incident, Lucas had come across a pile of valuable items on the ground from another player who had just died. He picked it all up and just like that, he was rich. But something else from the police report makes me think that he was already wealthy before this and this moment would just give him another boost to his bank. When the police interviewed Lucas about what happened, this is what he told them about his RuneScape character. I am very rich on RuneScape and and because I am rich, I am also very strong. I am very strong with different weapons and almost impossible to beat. Because of my large property on RuneScape, I change my password almost every three days because I'm afraid someone hacks me. I'm sorry, I know he just underwent something awful, but bragging that you're almost impossible to beat on RuneScape in a police report is just kind of amazing. 
The younger boy found out about Lucas' stroke of luck and was extremely jealous. I imagine Lucas was bragging about it at school. Prior to Lucas looting a dead player, the younger boy was actually wealthier than Lucas. So the day before the attack, the younger boy messaged the older boy over MSN, informing him about the wealth that Lucas had just come into. He also told the older boy, come on, we're going to take his stuff. The older boy agreed, and you know what happens next. So I said earlier that the boy stole a valuable mask and amulet, and you might be wondering what those were. Unfortunately for us, the Dutch police are not RuneScape nerds, so they didn't write down exactly what they were. But I think I have a pretty good guess. I think the mask is a Halloween mask, since those were the most valuable masks in the game, but still relatively affordable back then. It could also be a black mask, because those were also pretty valuable at the time. The fact that Lucas looted it from another player makes me think that maybe they were on a Slayer task and died, but we'll never know for sure. The amulet was definitely a Fury amulet, because at the time, it was the best amulet in the game, and aside from the ridiculously expensive Third Age amulet, it was also the most expensive one. So what happened to all the boys involved in this case? Well, Lucas reported what had happened to the police, after which the two boys were called into the police station. They admitted to what they had done, and the police had them transfer the stolen items back to Lucas using a computer at the police station. Now, you think this might be the end of it, but we're really just getting started. The public prosecutor decided that they wanted to pursue criminal charges against the two boys, which at the time was pretty groundbreaking. Nobody had ever been punished for the theft of a digital item before. In fact, nobody even knew if what the two boys did to Lucas would even be considered theft in the eyes of the law. So the case goes to trial and immediately things get pretty messy. Now, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not Dutch, so this was kind of hard to understand. However, I did take one American business law class in college and know how to use Google Translate. So, yeah. Now, before I get started, I should mention that this trial was about the older boy's actions. What happened to the younger boy is a little bit fuzzy, but I'll discuss that later. Just know that only the older boy was at this trial. Anyway, there were conflicting stories on what actually went down the afternoon of the theft. If I'm reading this right, the older boy's lawyer immediately says that the trial should just adjourn because he thinks that Lucas, the younger boy, and the officers that interviewed the boys should be there to give witness statements. This is because the older boy was actually now partially denying what he was being accused of. According to his lawyer, he hadn't shown violent behavior in the past and said that he and the younger boy actually didn't use violence at all in the theft. As you can imagine, the court pretty much immediately throws this out because they already had a statement from both the younger boy and the older boy admitting that they did do what they were accused of with violence. They also had statements from Lucas and the police officers, so there was no reason to bring them in. I think the only thing I can give in defense of this lawyer is that just about every statement has slightly different details. Like in one version of the story I told at the beginning, Lucas didn't give control of the computer to the younger boy after logging in. Instead, the chair was pulled out from under him and the older boy stole the items. But the small changes aren't relevant and witness statements aren't always perfect. The alleged crime still occurred almost exactly the same way in every testimony. So the trial continues and it's actually pretty straightforward from here for now. The court argued that the items being digital didn't matter. What occurred was still theft. Their main reason was because the amulet and mask both had value and could be taken away. They had value because, well, both Lucas and the two boys valued them. They didn't necessarily need to have monetary value, although they did since RuneScape items are bought and sold all the time for real money, even if it is against the game rules. They could be taken away because RuneScape items are not like other digital files. Someone can steal a document from someone's computer and the original owner will still have a copy of it. It. With RuneScape items, it's a lot more like real items than digital files. Once an item is traded over, the only way to get it back is if the other player decides to. After hearing this, the older boy's lawyer argued that taking the items was actually fully allowed by the rules of RuneScape, so the two boys had done nothing wrong. 
What? Unless Jagex added a you must beat and rob other players in real life rule, I have absolutely no clue what he was trying to argue. If I had to guess, it's because other players could kill you in the wilderness and take your stuff, but that's in the game. Like if this guy's point was valid, you could go up to someone playing RuneScape in the library with a knife, take all their items, and it'd be all good. It's just part of the game. Now, maybe some of you still aren't sold on the court's reasoning that the two boys committed theft by taking Lucas's RuneScape items. At the end of the day, all they really took is pixels on a screen, right? How could they steal something that you can't even touch? Well, what about electricity? You can't touch that, but you can definitely steal it from your neighbor's house. Well, I guess you could touch it, but it would be the last thing you touched. Back in 1921, the Dutch Supreme Court made a ruling that goods no longer had to be tangible in order to be stolen because of a dentist that was stealing electricity from the electric company. So at the end of the trial, the older boy was found guilty and was given 160 hours of community service as punishment. Now, as for the younger boy, I believe he had a separate trial, but I couldn't find much information on him. So I'm thinking all the details about it just weren't made public. According to news articles around the time, he was also sentenced to community service. Just nobody can seem to decide on how much time he actually received. Some articles say he received 160, one says 180, and another says 140 hours. But this isn't the end of the story, at least for the older boy. The older boy's family, or lawyer, weren't happy with the outcome of the trial and decided to appeal the decision made by the court. In this appeal, the lawyer brought up a new and very interesting point. Lucas never actually owned the items that were stolen. Technically, RuneScape's creator, Jagex, owned them the whole time. If you look at RuneScape's end user license agreement, both your account and everything on it do really belong to Jagex. It's basically like you're just renting your account from them. In the eyes of Jagex, they had the items the whole time. Now, I think that's a really solid point, and I could definitely see the court siding with him on this one, but they actually rejected it. They compared a RuneScape item to a passport. Passports are the property of the government. A citizen that has one is really just its holder, not its owner. But someone can still have their passport stolen and suffer as a result. The amulet and mask technically belonged to Jagex, but they were still stolen from Lucas and he definitely suffered as a result. The court concluded by saying that the world was getting more digital every day. A new online world had emerged and it couldn't just be treated like an illusion where no criminal activity could occur because it was just technically bits and bytes of data. In the end, the appeal was denied and the older boy's punishment still stood, but this story still wasn't over. This case made it all the way to the Dutch Supreme Court in 2012. And again, similar points to the previous two trials were used and the older boy was still found guilty. But lucky for him, because the trial had gone on for so long, his sentence was reduced from 160 hours of community service to just 144. You might not expect it, but this case was actually pretty huge for Dutch law. While researching, I found dozens of articles about it from all over the globe. I even found a few Dutch law students who say that this case is actually frequently used by law professors as a teaching example in class to this day. Should something like this ever happen again, even in another country, this case could be brought up and maybe even used as persuasive precedent. Our little medieval fantasy game and its items changed Dutch law forever, and maybe even one day the world. But speaking of items, did you know Jagex promised to never release dragon claws into old school RuneScape? Well, they lied. Over on the right, you can check out a full video I did about that, and don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get the awesome bonuses I discussed earlier.